Music here on Ninja TV has come to Hollywood to discuss Oliver Stone's new film, Snowden, with Ralph Echimendia, the Hollywood hacker. Secure Ninja. So I'm here in Hollywood today with our good friend of the show, Ralph Echimendia. How are you, Ralph? Good, good. Glad to have you here. Definitely. Thank you so much for having us at your amazing house here in the Hollywood Hills. Thank you. Yeah, and you've got to live here in Hollywood because you are the Hollywood hacker. Well, that's, uh, that's what they say. Um, well, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been almost five and a half years since I moved out here from uh, Miami. Right. So it's uh, a little bit different, but a lot the same in, in many ways. But yeah, I moved out here to really focus more on, on, on the security of Hollywood films, right. um, especially while they're in production, because I happen to have handled a couple of forensic cases that dealt with Hollywood films and then realized that there was a, a huge gaping opportunity and, and right. at the same time many holes in, in the way they did things. Absolutely. So. It's an interesting little niche and of course we've like followed your career over the last four years. You know with Secure Ninja we always talk to you but we wanted to catch up with you again because you just did an awesome consulting gig on the new film Snowden. Yep. So we obviously want to hear everything about that as much as you can tell us. Well, yeah, I uh, can't talk too much about the details of it uh, other than uh, it was uh, uh, definitely the most immersive of the experiences I've had. This is the second film I've worked with with uh, Oliver Stone. And um, we spent uh, about three months in Germany uh, where we filmed this. So it was filmed in Germany, Hong Kong, D.C., and Hawaii. So um, I was really only long for that during Germany and Hawaii, right. um, but spent three months in, in Germany in the filming of that. Um, it was a very, very interesting and immersive process, I bet. Uh, not only on the aspect of uh, authenticity in the film uh -huh. and, and really working with just about every, every head of every department as well, obviously, you know, with Oliver's direction, but also um, handling how the film how the digital assets would be handled, right? Um, because the film is technically an independent film; it's not a major mm -hmm. studio uh, in the in the U.S. being backing it. So, right. So it was important for Oliver to get those nail those technical details. Yeah, yeah, that was that in. was definitely very important, um, and also to make sure that we didn't have any leaks of, of any of the content while it's being filmed. Right. Produced, so. So on one side you're consulting for you know what's being seen on screen, but then you're also working kind of behind the scenes and protecting everything. Yeah, and you yeah. do that for a lot of films. You've done that. I've right? done that for a few films. Yeah, um, it's uh, that's kind of the interesting thing about Hollywood is they don't uh, entirely get it yet, and uh, even though you've had these major breaches like Sony and whatnot, um, there's a big uh, disconnect between what is production security and what is piracy, and mm -hmm. so. Most of the focus is on what we hear as piracy, which is really more once the film is out, once the film has been released, um, and you know, once it's it's gone to the pirate bays of the world, it's it's done. There's right. not uh, there's not a heck of a lot that they can do. Um, it's all more than anything else, legal enforcement of copyright infringement. Right. Um, but prior to the the film's release, there's, that's a whole new world that mm -hmm. all kinds of different issues that. Hollywood has never really had to deal with this way because of the uh, digital revolution, which which has now kind of taken over every aspect of filming too. So in every aspect right. of production, there's there's really even if a movie shot on film, mm -hmm. there's really no film anymore because everything's being done right. digitally. And everything's shared digitally, so that makes it all the information far more vulnerable. Absolutely, and it's a bring your own device type of so BYOD right. world. Mm -hmm much more so than any other that I've ever encountered. So everyone involved right. is using, you know, their Gmails, their Yahoos, their Hotmails. There's no corporate enterprise email. There's no, um, none of that. Everything right. is leased. Everything's temporary. Everything's only there for the time wow. of the film. And then it kind of goes back. So it, this, you don't have any of the security mechanisms or policies or any of that kind of stuff that could be, you know, normally in an enterprise environment right. it just doesn't exist in, in the production side oh of hollywood it does in a studio right. meaning back in the studio where everybody is uh, not really directly associated with the making of a film that's right. more of the operational side of the studio but um but when it comes to the production itself is 
there's really nothing there. Right. So, so you're saying that like even because a lot of people will criticize corporations for not having the proper measures in place for security. You're saying Hollywood is like even worse than that. They're not even. Yeah, absolutely. There, there are certain studios. Um, for example, Disney is very good at, at how they. Yeah how they do certain things and the requirements that they have of their service providers in, right. in, in the production side of things. But it, there's no standard like you have in, in many other industries. You know, there's no PCI or HIPAA or any kind of standard, you know, requirements that they have to do. So even though you have the MPA and they have some best practices and such, you know, type of things, but it isn't necessarily required by by every production to do it that way. And uh, every single production works differently. So it depends on the director, it depends on the producers. So it, it is a whole new world that, you know, not many of us from the security and hacking community have, have uh, there are a few, um, but the interesting thing is the majority of those are directly involved in filmmaking. They're uh -huh. not really uh, about security in film. Right. They're actually you know, folks who work in, in production right. somewhere or another. Just kind of taking on that element of it. Yeah, so this yeah. Is, it's more of their work that not really incorporating security into that work. They're more, right. like I said, there might be, you know, art direction, production design, uh -huh. you know, things like that. But, yeah. uh, but really not much of a focus. Uh, for example, on a, you know, take uh, Twilight, which was that film that I worked on uh -huh. when it got leaked, that was, um, you know, Three hundred million dollars or something like that mm -hmm. to film those those two films, and there is no IT on set. There's there's no IT security really, other right. than you know somebody who's part of the the camera department who's responsible for taking the, the you know taking the, the memory out of the camera and putting it on a hard drive and then moving it to another hard drive. They're takes. not yeah. There's no real um, technology people other than those that are directly associated to filming. Right. So it's kind of interesting that you know, companies are spending right. hundreds of millions of dollars on a film and yet not... Protecting it. Not one, and, and even though the whole thing is digital. Right. So yeah. what are some of the technical precautions that they should be taking or could be taking to protect the data from ever getting leaked? Well, some of those things have uh, recently been outlined um, in the best practices at the MPA, the Motion Picture Association. Like I said, they, they are an organization that for the most part is still primarily focused on piracy. Mm -hmm. um, but they have put out some best practices on the security of how to handle uh, moving digital assets around. So. Uh, you know, things like using encryption on these files when you're moving them, um, that's something that, that is still is not really standard mm -hmm. in the industry. Or for that matter, using encryption on the hard drives where they're moving this, this stuff right. to. Um, even just the basic encryption is not something that is entirely standard. But then there's just, uh, you know, like I said, every single production workflow is different. Mm -hmm. How things move from one place to the other, how they get to visual effects, how they get to sound, for example, how they get to the scoring side of things and music. So every one of those players, which there's, you know, right. a multitude of them, yeah. all have their own IT systems, <coughs> mm -hmm. you know, and they all really operate very much like a small business would. Right. Um, but even, even worse is that they really generally don't have, you know, you have a kind of managed service providers for small businesses, you know, and, yeah. and security or IT. These you know these guys are really mostly one man shows or at the most ten people employed right. in one of these organizations. So it's um, you know it's small businesses that don't don't really have security in place or have right. a, a person in, in charge of it. So it's uh, you know it's something that I think is going to take some time and mm -hmm. probably more incidents will happen between you know now and and, and some real standardized practices right. taking right. place. So. That's good that you're the purveyor of this industry. You've kind of got your foot right there in the niche of Hollywood hacking. I think it's just been a matter of timing, you know. Right. Um, it was just uh, good timing, and you know, I've had I've had good good success with yeah. with meeting the right kind of people and Absolutely. getting the, the right kind of access. Um, because that's the other part is, you know, it's a very creative, artistic industry, and and so mm -hmm. you know, just uh, bringing in computer geeks uh, mm -hmm. into that environment is uh can be a little you know off-putting to right. some of these people right. uh, it's like speaking a different language and, right. and they don't really 
care. Uh-huh. Um, they just care about their art and, and making their art. Right. Um, and I think that's that's a big disconnect is that um, they are doing that, but it's all now on a digital format as opposed to mm-hmm. film. So uh, that changes everything really from the perspective of access to the content itself. You know, so it's uh, it's been an interesting ride, and I think there's a lot more to come, you know? Absolutely. Well, I think you were like the perfect person for that role, because you are the super skilled hacker, yet you're like the cool Hollywood dude that can totally fit in on a film set. Uh, well, I don't think I'm that cool, but uh, but it, it has been a blessing. It's it's really cool yeah. um, to be a part of this, and who would have ever thought that it would, it would have ended up here, you know? I know. Um, but speaking of cool, um, it looks like you're wearing half my stuff. Did you uh, raid my closet there? Because uh, this is my look. This is my secure ninja is that, look. Is that your secure ninja look? Because that looks like my hat. I wear and, this. Uh, looks like maybe my watch and maybe. Well, uh, I need to know what time it is. So just check. Uh huh. So and so I guess good. my I'm I'm guessing my physical security didn't it didn't. You had didn't no pass. physical security. I I walked in. I hacked your jewelry stash and I pwned you. you I pwned you. you. I pwned your look. She pwned me. I love it. Trade me. Oh, there you go. Oh, that is cute on you. Is this cute on me? Of course like, it is. I like to dress up as Ralph. Of course. Yeah. It looks great. I'm going to wear this great. to DEF CON this year. Are you? Yeah, I'm going to be you for DEF CON. You're going to be me for DEF CON. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> can I be you? People dress up for these things. Can I be you for DEF CON? Yes, you could be me. I can be Alicia. What would you Defcon. do? Like, I'd have to get like a... Lipstick. Know, lipstick. Uh, do some yoga. Uh huh. Lots of yoga. Lots Just of wear yoga. yoga pants half the time. Yoga pants. Oh, uh-huh. okay. you're gonna have to wear a secure ninja gear. Yeah. Luckily, we can do that at DEF CON. Yes. Yoga pants. Yes. It's, it's totally. Yes. Normal. We even have secure ninja yoga pants these days. We do. Yes, I'll look you up. up with that. I'll look you up as well. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ralph. Thank you for having us to your home My and pleasure. showing me around Hollywood and telling me a little bit about the Snowden film. My pleasure. My pleasure. I, More to come. I, let's go see Snowden together. Yeah. When it comes yeah. out. When does it come out? I think it's coming out in the summer or the fall. I'm not exactly sure. The, okay. the official release date has not been put out yet, but uh, it, it's going to be a, a really interesting, really good movie, I, yeah. I believe. It was a crazy story, and I know you knew a lot about it, so. Yeah, I'll be able to say more once the movie's out. Right, absolutely. Awesome. All right, well, we'll see you at DEF CON this year? Yeah. Yes. Yes. For sure. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. My pleasure. Let's do this again soon. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our hacker coverage. And let us know what you think about the whole Edward Snowden situation. And definitely let us know what you think about the film once you get a chance to see it. I'm Alicia Webb. Thanks for watching.